Shalom, precious saints. How are you doing? This is your host, Sister Dalila dos Santos, to deliver the word of our Lord Jesus without compromise. I invite you all to hide under the shadow of the Almighty and seek refuge, Sister Blessings. Shalom, how are you doing today, Sister Blessings? Hope all is well in Jesus' name. Sister Ty, Shalom. Sister Serena, Shalom. Hey, twin, Shalom. Shalom, shalom, precious saints, as you all join in. Shalom, Sister Tanya. Shalom, Marcelo. Shalom, Mascara MW. Shalom, shalom, Nelly Nell. Shalom, Brother Just King J. How are you doing? Shalom, shalom, Sister Serena. Sister Beth. Shalom, my sister. Sister Shimuri Chanel. Shalom. Shalom, 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 Sister Rikita Wola, Sister Tia, shalom, Sister Abimbola Akano, shalom, shalom, Sister Feli Belli, Amuti, shalom, beloved, shalom, Daddy Leo, blessings to you, welcome, welcome, Sister Mirna Rita, shalom, precious sister, shalom, Sister China. Shalom, shalom, shalom as you all join in. May the good Lord bless you. May he continue to uplift you and shine his face upon you and be graceful unto you. Shalom, Lucy. Shalom, precious sister. Brother Brian and Devereaux, shalom. Welcome. Sister Titi Ture, shalom, my sister. Welcome. How are you doing? Shalom, 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 Sister Jacqueline Bogle, shalom, Brother Andrew, shalom, Sister Ju, shalom, Sister Tamisha Brown, shalom, 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 as you all join in, saints, how are you doing? Shalom, 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 Sister Rosemary, shalom, shalom, Kath, shalom, Brother Andrew, Oye Market, shalom, Sister Catherine, shalom, Joy Elephant, Shalom, Manchester parents, shalom, Lillian, shalom, Sister Gladys Rahab, shalom, my sister, shalom, Sister Lisa, shalom, shalom, Sister Abby, Brother Tyron, welcome back, I'm glad to see you again. Sister Teresa, 72, shalom, Brother Robert Graham, shalom, precious, Sister Bridget, shalom, Sister Alia, shalom, Sister Abby, Brother Leo Bass Guy, Shalom, brother. How are you doing? Brother Dickinson, Shalom. Shalom, Sister Elizabeth Tadis. Brother Just King J, please type the do your daughter's name so I can shout her out as well so she will be happy. I got your message today that she got up this morning and asked for the live stream. Oh, yes, I was going to respond, but I've been extremely busy before I came here and I couldn't respond, but I will later on. But if you want, you can type her name and I'll shout, shout her out. Hallelujah. Shalom, 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 shalom. I'm greeting all. Brother Kieran, shalom, welcome. Sister Mary Love, shalom. Sister Shane Lizeth, shalom, precious sister. Sister Roxy is in the building, shalom, my sister, hello. Shalom, Sister Emily Jackson, welcome back, sister. Shalom, 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 saints, shalom, shalom. Servants of the Most High God, Sister Lulu, Sienna May. Okay, Sienna May, if you are listening, shalom, precious one. May the good Lord bless you, Sienna May, and may he continue to uplift you. I'm happy that you are here and you are only five. God bless you. How wonderful is that? Sister Aaron, shalom. Shalom, 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 saints. Shalom, Brother Michael. Precious saints, I'm sorry that I was a bit late today because I had um, a meeting earlier this morning and I came in a bit late, five minutes. And I wasn't able to go through all my messages as I normally do to respond. I tried my best, but time got the best of me. But saints, um, good morning. I sent you a message. Perfect skin call. Okay, I will have a look. All right, later on. Beloved saints, please do get your Bibles ready. Oh, I, <laughs> I will tell her, I will, shout, I will shout her out every day if she comes, Sister Sienna, our little sister, in the name of Jesus, Sienna May. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Sister Martha, Sam 23, Shalom. Precious saints of God, please do get your Bibles ready. Pen and paper. Again, my apologies because I wasn't able to 
to come any earlier because I had a meeting this morning and I came in a bit late. Um, sister sent a message and had... Okay, no problem, brother, brother Brian. I'll check, okay, later on. So, precious saints, get your Bibles ready, pen and paper to take notes. And the title for this live stream is Deliverance from Witchcraft. But the title had to be shortened because um, I didn't have enough space. So, really, the title is Deliverance from Witchcraft and Sacrifices. Oh, yes, we are going to learn a lot about two things. Witchcraft and sacrifices go hand in hand. We cannot separate witchcraft, witchcraft from sacrifices, okay? So um, you need to understand this, that witchcraft and sacrifices go hand in hand. Um, do get your Bibles ready, pen and paper, because you're going to learn a lot today on your journey to be delivered from these powers and also on your journey to be set free. Thank you, Sister Sheng and Lizette, for, you know, being able to pin everything. Glory be to God. I really thank you, Sister. So, saints, um, lately you all know that there is a solar eclipse about to happen on the 8th of April this month. But what some of us believers we are missing is that for the, for the occultic people, for the witches, wizards and warlocks, for the people in the occult, for the people that worship the devil, this is a very important um, occurrence, an event to them. Because certain sacrifices, certain oaths, certain agreements uh, are going to be um, reinforced during this solar eclipse. And new agreements are going to be also made. Okay? Because this is a um, an event that is, I don't know, for I think it, the, the next one is in 2050 something, right? So it's not a normal event. But what you need to understand is that witches and wizards and warlocks, they use ailments. They use the sun, the moon, and the stars. They use the, the ailments as well, like the wind, fire, the earth, the sea, to do rituals, to perform covenants, to uh, get power, okay? And this time of this solar eclipse, many of these occultic people are going to be performing sacrifices okay i don't have to go into detail both animal and human okay saints that and because they don't want to be disturbed in whatever it is that they will be doing they are telling you to stay in locked up get water don't leave the house and they're creating this fair mongering um whatever it is that they are creating for you to panic, stay home and afraid because they want the freedom. They want the liberty to be able to do such rituals, to be able to gather without your disruptance, okay? And without you being outside in ailments. So it is very important that you understand that this is a high occultic moment for um, servants of the devil. And I just want to say this, you as a believer, you need to have knowledge that this will be taking place and you need to be covered in prayer. You need to also cover your children in prayer, cover them under the blood of Jesus because um, some people that hate you, some people that don't want you to prosper, some people that after your case, they will use this solar eclipse to do rituals, incantations, to curse you, to curse your family. And some of them will be even doing things in the attempts to terminate your journey here in the land of the living. So this is not a time just for you to be at home considering how this solar eclipse um, is the end of the world and this and that. The devil is doing all these things so that you will stay home and you will allow his servants to do their rituals, to reinforce their covenants and to do whatever it is that they will be doing. Nevertheless, saints, I'm not going to be here just ranting. I am bringing the word of God to you to prove this to you. And also, we are going to pray at the end against witchcraft and sacrifices and against all the devices of witchcraft, okay? So that you will be protected. You'll be under the shadow of the Most High God. 
he will be under his wing. It is extremely important that the church, instead of staying out there, figuring out what they're going to be doing and, and running around like headless chickens, more, more, the most important is that you are praying, that you are in the presence of God, that I even suggest during the days of this eclipse, let us fast. I know that our fasting begins on the 15th, but those of you that have strength, those of you that you feel commissioned by God that, look, I need to fast for my family. I need to cover my family. Why not? Why not? Okay, saints, let us consecrate um, um, this live stream unto the Lord because we need him to be here. Some of you that you have witches and wizards and warlocks in your family that have been fighting you and they haven't been able to get access to you. They're going to try to use this solar eclipse to do rituals against you to overpower you and it is important that since you are also checking yourself how is your relationship with the lord are you faithful to god have you been faithful to him are you in any mean are you by any means failing to observe god's commandments are you failing to do that that god has commissioned you to do i don't know saints but you're gonna have to ask yourselves you're gonna have to go before god and say, Lord, if there is any sin in me that will uh, make me a target, a vulnerable target for the enemy, show me, Lord God, search me and forgive me and begin to pray. And moreover, pray for the children as well. Those of you that have family members that will unfortunately will have to go to work, pray for them. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence today, Lord God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us, Father, Lord. We thank you for your divine protection. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you for protecting us throughout the night, Lord God. We thank you for your provision thus far, Lord God. We thank you for your hand of mercy that is upon us, Lord God. We thank you because you never abandon us. Even when you have reasons to do so, Lord God, you are ever so patient, so loving, Lord God, and merciful. And Father Lord, we are here to worship you, to honor you, to give you glory and praise and adoration, Lord God. Father Lord, to honor you because you are our God. We don't have any other God but, but you. We don't have any other source of safety than you, Lord God. So, Father, Lord, as we are here in your presence, forgive us for our transgressions. Forgive us for all our iniquities, Almighty God. All the things that we have said, that we have done, that we have even confessed with our own mouths, in which we have offended you and proceeded wickedly against you, Almighty God. Have mercy, Abba, Father. Have mercy, King of glory. Father, Lord, don't cast us out from your presence, Lord God. But forgive us, but be merciful unto us, Lord God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your presence. Guide us, Almighty God. Show us the way in which we should go, Lord God, so that we won't be lost. So that we won't be, Father Lord, afflicted by the enemy. Almighty God, King of glory, as we are here in your presence, Lord God, to worship you, to honor you, Lord God. I am asking you today, King of glory, everlasting Father. I'm asking you, O oh, Almighty God, manifest your presence, manifest Manifest your power, manifest your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy. Open doors that no man can shut, Almighty God. Father, Lord, summon your children, Lord God, from the four corners of the world to listen to your message today, Lord God, so that, number one, they can repent while there is time to repent. Father, Lord, so that they can be born again and they can be grafted into your kingdom, Lord God, into your holy family. Almighty God, King of glory, we consecrate this live stream into your holy hands as we repent from all our iniquities up to 50 generations before us, Lord God. Blot out every transgression. Blot out every iniquity. Blot out every wickedness, Lord God. Be merciful, Abba Father. Be merciful, King of glory. Be merciful, I am that I am. We need your glory. We need your power. Take possession. Take control. Take authority of our lives, our hearts, our souls, our spirits, the live stream, the platform. Oh, Father, Lord, let this live stream be a platform for deliverance. Let this live stream be an avenue, Lord God, for salvation. Let this live stream, Father, Lord, be a light, Father, Lord, to those in darkness, Lord God. Let salvation manifest. Let repentance take place. Oh, Father, Lord, deliver your children from the hands of the wicked one. Deliver your children from, Father, Lord, the agents of darkness, the laborers of iniquity, Lord God. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you today, Lord God, be a wall of fire and of protection around us, each one of us, as we gather here in your presence, Lord God. 
release father lord father lord from your heavenly armies of angels to encamp around us to protect us and to deliver us from all evil oh almighty god king of glory a drench and saturate our environment the life stream father lord as well in the precious blood of your son jesus i envelope father lord every one of the saints myself including and my family in the precious blood of our lord jesus father lord i'm asking you lord god to use me as a vessel of honor lord god to to convey your words today so that many will come father lord before your throne to repent to be born again to receive the precious gift of salvation oh almighty god bind all principalities rulers of darkness wicked and demonic spirits targeting us and this live stream for evil bind them with the everlasting chains of your holy ghost fire cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever never to have the power dominion control authority lord god against thy servant servants, Lord God, against us, Lord God. Oh, Father, Lord, let every demonic and satanic arrow of wickedness return to sender by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver us all, Father, Lord, and our children from all forms of retaliation from the kingdom of darkness, Almighty God. Arise in your anger. Arise in your power. Arise in your vengeance. Arise, Father, Lord, in your vengeance, Father, Lord, and take authority, sovereignty, control of every witch, every wizard, every warlock, every agent of darkness present on this live stream. Bind them with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire. Render them powerless. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn them to ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh, Almighty God, King of glory, everlasting Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we ask you that the Holy Spirit will guide us. That the Holy Spirit, Father Lord, will open our mind, our understanding, so that the revelation will not pass us by, Lord God. But that, Father Lord, we will no longer be in ignorance concerning the devices of the enemy father lord in jesus mighty name amen amen and amen precious saints please do get your bibles um the reading is gonna be quite extensive, so please do not be dismayed i don't want you to be dismayed okay so the the scripture is found in second kings 1 to verse 27 Second Kings, from verse 1 to 27. Ahaziah's Ahaziah sickness and death. After the death of Ahab, Moab rebelled against Israel. Ahaziah had fallen through the latticed window of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messages instructing them, Go inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, if I will recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tisbite, Go and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask him, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal Zebub, the God of Akron? Therefore, this is what the Lord says, You will not get up from your sick bed. You will certainly die. Then Elijah left. The messengers returned to the king who asked him, Why have you come back? They replied, a man came to meet us and said, go back to the king who sent you and declare to him, this is what the Lord says. It is because there is no God in Israel that you are sending these men to inquire of Baal Zebub, the God of Akron. Therefore, you will not get up from your sick bed. You will certainly die. The king asked them, what sort of man came up to meet you and spoke those words to you? They replied, a hairy man with a leather belt around his waist. He said, is it Elijah the T-spite? So, so King Ahaziah sent a captain of 50 with his 50 men to Elijah. When the captain went up to him, he was sitting on top of the hill. He announced, man of God, the king declares, calm down. Elijah responded to the captain of the 50. If I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and 50 men. So the king sent another captain of 50 with his 50 men to Elijah. He took in the situation and announced, Man of God, this is what the king says, come down immediately. Elijah responded, If I am a man of God, may, the fi may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. So a divine fire came down from heaven and consumed him and 50 men. Then the king sent a third captain of 50 with his 50 men. 
The third captain of fifty went up and fell on his knees in front of Elijah and begged him, Man of God, please let me let my life and the lives of the fifty servants of yours be precious in your sight. Already fire has has come down from heaven and consumed the first two captains of fifty with their fifties. But this time, let my life be precious in your sight. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Don't be afraid of him. So he got up and went down with him to the king. Then Elijah said to the king Isaiah, This is what the Lord says, because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron. Is it because there is no god in Israel for you to inquire of his will? You will not get up from your sick bed. You will certainly die. Isaiah died according to the word of the Lord that Elijah had spoken since he had no son. Joram became king in his place. This happened the second year of Judah's king, Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat. The rest of the events of Isaiah's reign, along with his accomplishments, are written in the historical records of Israel. So, saints, you can see here that you have a king that he decided that he was going to consult a demonic god, which we all call Baphomet. I'm not going to read the entire scripture, but these people that are going during this eclipse, okay, who are they going to meet in those hills? Who are they going to meet in those valleys? Who are they going to meet? You have to inquire yourself about who is it that they are going to meet during this solar eclipse. Because as we understand, this solar eclipse will, is not just an any, any event. For us, simple people, we are thinking that it's just a phenomenal event and that's it. But that is not what we as believers should have understanding. We can see that down this time, they are going to consult Beelzebub. Beelzebub is the devil. Beelzebub is the Baphomet. He is the devil. There was even a song from a famous group of singers that had a crown. They, 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 they insignia is a crown. They, they, are, they were a British group. And the title of the music was Beelzebub. To tell you that these entertainment, entertainers, these famous people, these people in positions of power, they are seeking for more power from Beelzebub. They are seeking for more power from the devil. And they are willing to go to great extents to inquire from the devil what will happen to them in 2024. Are they going to become richer? Are they going to be able to be more influential? I don't know. Instead of seeking God, they are seeking Satan to get answers. And what Satan will do is that Satan is going to give them the, the terms of agreement, what it is that they need to do in order to be able to continue in power, to continue to be influential, to continue to have money, to continue to have fame and all these things. And we as believers, we have to understand that life is spiritual. We believers, we are the only ones sleeping on duty. If you go on YouTube and you go here on this platform, you will see many clairvoyants, many spiritualists already doing some sort of reading of the moon and the position of the moon and the eclipse and declaring the era of Aquarius, declare, no, the, the era of Iris and declaring all these different things over the moon, over the sun. You've got to understand that witches and wizards and warlocks, they thrive on programming the moon, the stars and the sun against children of God, against those who are in ignorance. Don't be in ignorance. While others are there hiding under the covers because it is the eclipse, you need to be fasting, you need to be praying, and you need, you need to do what the Bible is telling us in 2 Kings 1.27. Don't go and consult the news which belongs to Beelzebub about the eclipse. Don't go and consult media about the newspapers. Consult people, consult 
um, um, uh, um, people who are uh, um, into astrology, people who are from NASA, people who have understanding of planets and moons and stars. This is not the time for all that. It is time for you to consult the Lord your God. Will you not consult your God concerning this eclipse? Will you not consult your God concerning what it is that is going on? Will you not go to him? If you go to any person that reads cards, any person that is a clairvoyant, any person that, that, that is a medium, they, 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 they have a, a, a elements that's, that, that symbolize them. They have a cloth and in that cloth that they put on those tables where they have the crystal balls and they are doing the readings, you will see a sun, a moon, and you will see the stars. That is why some of the country's flags have stars. They are already telling you that the people in charge are also in charge of programming the moon, programming the stars, and programming the sun. How many countries and their flags have the sun? Some of them have stars, some of them have moons and half moons. All these are symbols of witchcraft. What is witchcraft? Witchcraft is manipulation. Not only the manipulation of human beings, but the manipulation of the elements, the manipulation of currency the e economy manipulation of so uh, of society manipulation of everything that can be manipulated this is what witchcraft means but the witchcraft that we are going to, we are talking about is on a very high scale it's not your little little uh, herbal man that works some some potions round down the corner or your little witch that reads cards i'm talking about high level sorcery commanding the moon speaking onto the moon do you know that they are sending some some rockets to the moon you can go to the website of nasa and they will tell you that they want during the, the eclipse they will be sending three three rockets up to the to the moon this is the programming that i'm talking about they are sending things you think that they are just sending things you don't know what is inside of those capsules it could be anything but definitely they are communicating with an entity they are communicating with a power and we can see here who the kings and kings communicate with beelzebub himself I've given you the word of God. If you want to believe, you can believe. If you don't want to believe, that is your choice. And let me tell you something. Those of you that are spiritual and you have a little bit of understanding. There are people who have made covenants with the devil. That they can shape shift into werewolves. They can shape shift into um, animals. Because they have made a covenant with the devil where they can shape, shape shift. This, this, this is facts. Okay? And if you, if you notice, majority of people who have seizures is when it's full moon. People who are prone to seizures have seizures during full moon. Okay? Some people can program the moon to oppress you at night. The Bible tells us the sun will not scorch you by day, neither the moon by night. Some people can pray against you that the sun will scorch you by day. That means that all your days will work against you. We are, we are quoting the Bible here. We are not, it's not Sister Dalila's opinions. I'm here to say that there are people who have seizures, during full moon, including they are under a witchcraft manipulation power that is manipulating them. Either a familiar power or because someone in the family is manipulating them. And I'm telling you that some people who have, are prone to seizures, it is because they've already been possessed by demonic entities. And they are being used by people in the occult. Okay. When they want to initiate a person into the demonic, the first sign will be that that person will go into seizure. Mental illness as well. During full moon, you will see that the people in the mental units need to be injected with certain things, need to be undergo certain treatments to calm them down because something happens during full moon. And what happens is that those who have knowledge... Of the occult know these things but christians they are sleeping 
Meanwhile, there are people going to Beelzebub to consult about you. Are you going to leave this year of 2024? How can they bring you down? How they can make you lose your job? How is it that they're going to make you have cancer? They are already in place and wait, they have everything needed for them to do certain rituals during that, that eclipse. And you are there sleeping and thinking, oh, my, as long as I have water in my house and flashlights, I'll be good. If you don't have the light of Christ in your home, if you are not hiding under the shadow of the most high God, if you are not under the blood of Jesus, I'm telling you that you are a candidate to disaster this eclipse. You are a candidate for higher occultic ceremonies. You are going to be under all of that because all you need is lights in your home, generator and, 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 and water. And, 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 and bread to make some sandwiches. But you are not thinking about the spiritual implications of this solar eclipse. Why are they telling you to lock yourself up it, at home? Why are they telling you don't leave the house? They don't want you even outside. Because they don't want any disturbance while they're doing whatever it is that they are doing. It's time to wake up saints. Stop sleeping. And every time you see that witches and wizards and warlocks gather, they just don't gather just because. They gather to perform sacrifices. They gather to offer something to Beelzebub. Beelzebub is not one that wants to be greeted with empty hands. Only us believers go to God empty-handed. Only us go to, to God empty-handed and expecting him to do everything for us. The Satanists, the witches and wizards and warlocks, the people in the occult, they know when they are about to go and greet their God, they need to bring something. Come on now. It is the truth. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? And the devil copies everything that God does. So he wants a sacrifice. And he wants the best of his people. And these people are willing to give him. But we, the children of God, sacrifice of prayer, we can't. Sacrifice of praise, we can't. Sacrifice of fasting, sacrifice of reading scripture, sacrifice of switching off the television to focus on hearing the voice of God, we can't do it. Sacrifice to give to God, we can't do it. But we are expecting God to do everything for us. But we can't even sacrifice nothing. We, we, we are, we've gotten so used to. Praying five minutes and seeing signs and miracles and wonders. That's it. And that's all we all we all do. You can't sacrifice anything. You can't sacrifice not eating this week. You can't sacrifice. Just say, look, this month, this week, I'm not going to do any entertainment in my house. I'm just going to focus more on the word of God. I'm just going to mean him. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go on social. I'm not going to engage in talking to my friends this week. I am going to focus on serving my God. I'm going to render service to my God. But the people in the occult, they know this principle and they are very diligent. That's why they don't want you roaming around the streets looking for water, gas and this and matches and whatnots. They've already told you that, look, get your water, get your lights, get out of the way. We are about to do what we need to do. And we don't want you walking around and disturbing us. Meanwhile, we are sleeping. We that we're supposed to be guardians, we're supposed to be the watchmen on the wall. We are sleeping and it's a heavy, heavy sleep. But the children of darkness are diligent, disciplined. You know why they call you a disciple? You know why they call us disciples? Disciples mean discipline. One that is disciplined in following if you are a disciple, it means that you follow with due diligence. You follow with great discipline. You are meticulous in your following. You don't follow just anyhow. You are disciplined. But we think that we can pray when we feel like it. We can praise God when it's convenient. We can share the gospel if we are, we are in a good mood. But it's amazing how we all, when we come before God, in some of us, we can't even praise him, which he is worthy of praise. All we do is to complain. 
Oh God, you have not given me this. You have not given me that. You promised me a house. You promised me that I would be married. You promised me this, but you have not fulfilled your promise. I'm still waiting for what you are going to do. But you cannot do, 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 you cannot be disciplined in worshiping him. Lord, I'm in your presence, regardless of what is going on around me, regardless of my situation. I'm not here to complain, Lord God. I won't be complaining today. I'm just here to serve you. I'm just here to worship you. I'm just here to honor you for who you are. How many of you can do this? Some of you, your prayer is just complaining from the beginning to the end of the prayer. You begin the prayer by complaining and you end the prayer by complaining and being ungrateful to God. But let me tell you something. Some of you that have been taking things that God has given you for granted. God has given you health. You don't care to thank him for it. God has given you a job. You don't care to thank him for it. God has given you this and has given you that. I'm telling you that God is going to allow this eclipse to come and take that that belongs to you. And even what you don't have, you are going to lose to those who are willing to sacrifice more to the devil. That five minute prayer won't do it. You that don't like to pray between the hours of midnight to 3 a.m. This, when this event happens and they are sacrificing to their God, we are going to find out who we're going to know, who has been praying and who has been pretending. Just saying. Those of you who have been praying, it will show up during the eclipse because, you know, they're saying they're declaring a, a new era. With this eclipse. The eclipse marks a new era. Okay. That's why they, they, they're going to sacrifice. Because they are making investments into this new era that is about to come. They are programming the moon for the next how many decades until the next eclipse comes. They are open portals to get more power from Beelzebub. They are open portals. They are open avenues in the spirit to receive impartation from demons so that they can continue in power so that they can continue to manipulate the economy manipulate whatever it is that they are manipulating but you are sleeping you think that the world will be here regardless ah hey, it's another eclipse carry on there, whenever you see these eclipses, moon events, these, these, the, the witches and wizards and warlocks, the people in the occult, they are programming what they are programming into the moon, into the sun. They're going to be speaking things, but you cannot even be present in your midnight prayer to program the moon, program the day, to speak over your day. You can't do it. So how are you going to survive? Because they have gone to consult Beelzebub. And Beelzebub has told them, I need this sacrifice. I need you to provide this, provide that, provide that. And they have everything and they're just waiting for the eighth to present the sacrifice, to pay the dues to Beelzebub. It is time for you to wake up. You that you are thinking of what you want and want this and want that. Time to give your life to Christ. There is a battle for your soul. I see many people come here on the live stream and then all they do is ask, 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 ask. Because that's how we perceive God. God is, is, is Father Christmas. We don't understand that the battle is for your soul. The battle is for where you're going to spend eternity. Some of you that are asking, asking, instead of you to ask God for life. Because by, by, by what somebody in your family has offered the devil, your soul is up for grabs. Your soul is up for grabs. Your very life is up for grabs. But you're asking for this and that. Instead of say, Lord, if anyone has gone to the devil concerning my life, Father Lord, I pray that you will disappoint them and judge them accordingly and deliver me, God. There is a battle for your soul. There is a battle for your life. It's, it is much deeper than paying your bills, your rent, buying food and clothing. There is somebody that wants you unalived in 2024. There is somebody that wants to take one of your children in 2024. And they have gone down to the devil. To be Beelzebub. To request your soul. To request your prosperity. To request everything that you have. And they are willing to pay any price. To bring you down. 
Oh, Sister Dalila, how do I know? How do you know? Let us go to the Bible. Second Kings 3. Moab revolts. Joram, son of Ahab, became king of Israel in Samaria in the 18th year of, of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. And he reigned 12 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father and mother had done. He got rid of the sacred stone of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. He did not turn away from them. Now Mesha, king of Moab, raised sheep, and he had to pay the king of Israel a tribute of a hundred thousand lambs and the wool of a hundred thousand rams. But after Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So at the at the time, King Jerome set out from Samaria and mobilized all Israel. He also sent his message to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? I will go with, with you, he replied. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. By what route shall we attack, he asked. Through the desert of Edom, he answered. So the king of Israel set out with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. After a roundabout march of seven days, the army had no more water from their for themselves or for the animals with them. What? exclaimed the king of Israel. Has the Lord called us three kings together only to deliver us to the hands of Moab? But Jehoshaphat asked, if there, if there no prophet of the Lord here through whom we may inquire of the Lord, an officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, son of Shaphat, is here. He used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, why do you want to involve me? Go to the prophets of your father and prophets of your mother. No, the king of Israel answered, because it was the Lord who called us three kings together to deliver us into the hands of Moab. Elisha said, as surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, if I did not have respect for the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not pay any attention to you. But now bring me a harpist. Hallelujah. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came on Elisha and he said, This is what the Lord says. I will fill this valley with pools of water. For this is what the Lord says. You will see neither wind nor rain. Yet this valley will be filled with water and you, your cattle and your other animals will drink. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. He will also deliver Moab into your hands. You will overthrow every fortified city and every major town you will cut down every good tree stop up all the springs and ruin every good field with stones the next morning about the time for offering the sacrifice there it was water flowing from the direction of edom and the land was filled with water now all the moabites had heard that the kings had come to fight against them so every man young and old who could bear arms was called up and stationed on the border. When they got up early in the morning, the sun was shining on the water. To the Moabites across the way, the water looked red like blood. That's blood, they said. Those kings must have fought and slaughtered each other. Now to the plunder Moab. But when the Moabites came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and fought them until they fled. And the Israelites invaded the land and slaughtered the Moabites. They destroyed the towns and each man threw a stone on every good field until it was covered. They st stopped up all the springs and cut down every good tree. Only Ker Harathseth was left with its stones in place, but men armed with slings surrounded it and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that the battle had gone against him, he took he took with him 700 swords, swordsmen to break through to the king of Edom, but they failed. Then he took his firstborn son. Pay attention. Then he took his firstborn son, who was to succeed him as king, and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. The fury against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. Number one. 
You can see here three kings got together to go and fight the Moabites. Let me give you deeper. Let me, let me interpret it to you. Three kings got together to go and fight the Moabites because Moab had rebelled against, 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 um, against Judah, against Israel. They didn't want to pay the they, 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 they tax because they were under Ahab. Ahab had died. But you have three kings. One king that was in rebellion against God, was worshipping other gods. Two kings that didn't have a relationship with God, that were unfaithful to God, they were idolaters. And they had one king that was righteous. This king was Jehoshaphat. The only reason why Elisha even wanted to listen to what it is that they wanted to speak. It was in respect for Jehoshaphat that was a righteous man, a holy man of God and a holy king. As for the two others, the king of Judah and the king of Israel, the prophet Elisha had no business, wanted no business with them. Okay? But because of Jehoshaphat, he decided, okay, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to inquire from the Lord concerning this issue, concerning this battle that you were about to embark and that you were this battle that you were losing because they were losing the battle they were powerless before the enemies but i want to go deeper saints be very careful who you associate with jehoshaphat was a righteous man and for a minute he forgot that you couldn't win any battle with unrighteous people with idolaters but because he wanted, he, he said, well, your battle is my battle. You, 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 they're attacking Israel, so they're attacking the king of Judah. Instead of them listening to them, look, I know I have no business with you. I'm going to protect my own kingdom. I'm going to just watch over Judah. As for the rest of you that are idolaters, I have no business with you. But Jehoshaphat thought that he could help the helpless. Some of you that are keeping friends, family members, because of blood relation, because of, because of friendship, because you are accustomed to them. You are keeping them as a friend. You are keeping covenant with them. You are breaking bread with them. You are taking the battles as if it was your battle. I'm telling you, it will not be well with you because look at what happened to Jehoshaphat. Some people will bring you down. Because you will partake of the witchcraft. You will drink of the cup of the witchcraft. You will partake of the rituals. Because you are keeping covenant with them. You are making agreements with them. By breaking bread with them. By associating yourself with them. You are as much as, a, as an idolater as them. Power of association. Number one. You can see here that the other two didn't want to consult God. They were willing to go freestyle. But because Jehoshaphat was a man of God, he said, let us consult God through prophet Elisha. Bring him here. Let him speak to God and give us the message. And, 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 and make sure, listen, God was about to end those two kings long ago, but the only reason why God was still patient, he was because of who? Jehoshaphat. Because of Jehoshaphat, God was being patient. Because of Jehoshaphat, God did not allow the Moabites to slaughter them. Some of you, the only reason why your life has not been taken away from you is because you still worship God. You are not in idolatry. But the reason why you cannot go forward, the reason why you are fighting arrows here and there is because of the people that you keep as friends, that you keep as cousins, that you keep as best friends, that you keep as siblings, that you keep at whatever. Be very careful. Sister Dalila, you are too extreme. I'm not extremist in the word of God. Let us go deeper. Once Elijah was given a prophecy concerning what was going to happen, the, the prophecy came to fruition. It came to pass because God always keeps his promises. If he promises you something, he's going to keep it. But depending of who, on who you are keeping around you, you will not be successful even. You see some people that say, but God has a prophecy over my life. God has certain declarations. So did, did Jehoshaphat. 
God had promised Jehoshaphat the victory. God had already told Jehoshaphat that I will make this, I will make you victorious. I will make you gain territory. I'll give you the victory. And God did. But because he still kept company with those two idolaters, wicked men, that prophecy came to an end. Okay? Because God was showing us something even today. Be very careful who you keep as friends. Be very careful who you make allegiance with. Be very careful who you allow in your space, who allow to counsel you, who allow to take you, lead you to places. And you don't know they could be leading you to your very end. They could be leading you to your demise. They could be leading you to the end of your life. True word. You can see that that prophecy about the waters that they will that, that, that they were gonna be able to escape and the animals will be able to drink water they will be they will have water and the enemies will be confounded by the same waters and 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 and, and they would be able to plunder more up that prophecy came to pass but when the moabites became desperate that look we are about to be annihilated of our territory. We are about to be completely eradicated, dissipated from the land. The king decided to do what? Offer sacrifice. Mind you, Jehoshaphat and the two other kings, they had already sacrificed some animals through who? Through Elisha. But the king of Moab gave a greater sacrifice unto his altar and he gave what? The best that he had. He gave who? His only son. Come on now, somebody, you are here that are still doubting me. Who did Moab gave as a sacrifice? His only son that was about, that was the, the, the one to, rip, to, to succeed him. So the sacrifice of the king of Moab, an idolater, spoke more powerfully, spoke more heavily than the sacrifice. You see how we believe us? We are still taking two coins to give to God in the altar or for the furtherance of the gospel. Meanwhile, the Satanists are giving children their own firstborn and this. But you are praying two minutes and you are tired. Ah. Midnight, you're drooling. 3 a.m., the covers are off your body, in your bed. Meanwhile, they are taking their firstborn to some mountain somewhere. They are doing rituals. They are performing rituals. They are sacrificing something more valuable than your, your three-minute prayer, your five-minute prayer, more valuable than your half-day fasting. They are providing something heavy, and that sacrifice will still speak because he gave his best. What, what was God going to say? Eh? And let me tell you something. If it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, a man of God, a true man of God. If it wasn't for him. They would have been dead. And let me tell you something. Let me, let me see who is, 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 knows the Bible. What sacrifice did Jehoshaphat provided? Come on now. Bible quiz. What sacrifice did Jehoshaphat provide? Come on now. Let me see if you're reading your Bible. People of God. Mm? Jehoshaphat didn't offer anything. He just offered animals. But we do have a man in the Bible. That he promised to God. He says, God. If I win this battle, the first thing that comes out of my house, I will sacrifice it to you. And guess what happened? The first person that came out of his house to greet him when he returned home from the battle was his daughter, Sister Kendra. Thank you. Sister Kendra. Sister, everybody saying the daughter. 
God did not ask him. But he said, Lord, if you allow me to win this battle, the first thing that comes to out of my house, I will sacrifice it to you. So Jephthah had to, you know, sacrifice because that is what he had promised. Anyone, anything, isn't that? But who did Jehoshaphat offer for sacrifice before Elijah? Animals. I'm sure maybe a goat, maybe a ram. Some of us is like that. We give ram and goat. Others are giving people. That's why no matter how you try to pray, it's like there is a certain demonic power. That is oppressing you because why? You have not given God your best. You are giving God the scraps, the leftovers. And you are expecting big, 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 big victories. You have never fasted for a month in your whole life, but you are expecting to be delivered. You have never left anything behind to follow Christ, but you are expecting to have victory against witches and wizards and warlocks. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me take you again to scripture. Let us go to verse 26 to 27. When the king of Moab saw that the battle had gone against him. Come on now, somebody. When the witches and wizards and warlocks, they are fighting you. You are praying. You, you are fasting. You are on fire for God. They say, no, this one, I'm going to have to do something. Because if I am to, to have the victory against these people, I'm going to have to do something more powerful than them. He understood that principle. So he took with him 700 swords meant to break through to the king of Edom, but they failed. So everything that he kept, he, he tried to do to overpower the Israelites, to, to stop them, failed. Most important verse, 27. Then he took his firstborn son who was to succeed him as king and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. The fury against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. That means that the slaughter after he had sacrificed his son was such that the kings of Israel and the rest of the army had to flee for, for, for their lives, had to run to preserve their own lives. It's in the Bible, saints. It's in the Bible. I'm not here with my own opinions. You can fact check by writing down the scriptures and go and look for yourself. So I want to encourage you as a believer in Christ. Give your very best to God. Stop giving leftover prayer. You spend your whole day watching films. Scrolling on the internet. And when you are tired and have no energy. That is the time that you give to God, but you are expecting witches and wizards and warlocks to run away from you, to flee from you. How is it going to happen? You are there sacrificing five minutes of reading the word of God, yet they are taking their firstborn to give to Beelzebub, to present their sacrifice. But you... Can't get up midnight to say today I'm going to get up midnight to raise an altar to God in my house, to pray to my God, to seek refuge in him, to ask him about this eclipse. Uh, what does he want me to do? What am I supposed to do? What is it that he wants me to do? No. You are running from one more to another to look for candles, to look for matches, to look for God knows what. But the most important investment, which is in prayer, which is in supplication to God, reading the word of God, seeking other believers that you can stand in agreement with them to pray, consulting God. The Bible tells us here, saints, second of Kings 1, 27. The hairy man Elijah said, would you not consult your God concerning whatever it is that is afflicting you? There is no God in Israel. So God is not your God anymore. You are constantly now online to see what you can buy to, to, to keep your house warm during these days, to keep lights in your home, to keep food in your home for these days. Is it not God your God? That you should consult him over before you even leave the house. You should consecrate the day to God. You should consecrate your life, your children and everything that you have to God. Hmm? 
The words of Elijah were harsh. After the death of Ahab, Moab rebelled against Israel. Ahaziah had fallen through the latticed window of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. Some people, they can't consult God. They are sick. They don't consult God. They want to go to a witch. They want to go to a wizard. Husband has left home. They have run to consult Baal Zabab. They have gone to uh, a tarot reading, car, palm reading. They have gone to seances. They have gone to do crystal this. They have gone to do that, this and that. Doing the most. Would you not consult God about your life? Come on now. Why are we running to idols? Oh, Sister Dalila, I'm a believer. I don't have no idol. Yes, you do. Anything that takes your time more than your God is your idol. Some of you, your job is your idol. Your children are coming to you. Hey, Daddy. Hi, Mommy. Hi. Oh, I can't talk to you now. I brought home some work. I'm going on my laptop and I don't want to be interrupted. That is your idol and that is your God. And by the time you finish with whatever work you, you, you left on that laptop, you go to your bed to say, hey, thank you, Jesus, providing me this job. And you have collapsed in that bed. Some of you, your God is called this TikTok. You are always here scrolling, watching cats jumping from one window to another. Watch young girls shaking whatever they're shaking. Some of you, you are watching a, a, a pen dropping and then another man swindling. It's the stupidity. Some of you are watching what's going to happen to, to, to P something. Is he going to prison? Is he, is he, what happened? You are here, some of you will type a whole testament to defend your celebrity. Oh, he was not involved, this, 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 and that. That is your idol. Some of you, food is your idol. You are now thinking, hey, will Uber Eats still be functioning with, with, during this solar eclipse? Will they still deliver pizza? Hey! How, what am I going to do? That is, that is your idol. I don't care. If you want to leave, leave. Be my guest. Some of you, your idol is your house. Hey, with this solar eclipse, will I still have that roof? I hope it's not going to interfere with the roof. Hey, hmm, I hope my car outside will not be, nothing will happen. That is your God. That is your God. Instead of you sitting down, Lord, Many people are telling me that this is a scientific event. That I have nothing to worry about. Stop spiritualizing things that are scientific. But Lord, I know the word. You said the moon will turn into blood. You spoke about the signs in the sky. Lord, what is it that the devil is doing during this season? Father Lord, show it to me in dreams. Don't allow me to be a casualty to the devil's plans and plots. Because, Lord, I'm not going to be a casualty. Because I'm consulting you concerning this solar eclipse. Why, why, why there is such a commotion? What is going on, Lord? Show me things. The Bible says, call on to me in the book of Jeremiah. And I will show you things that you didn't know of. That says the Lord. The Lord thy God. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Some of you, you're on Google. Like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> Luna eclipse, solar eclipse. How to protect your home. But you have not called on to God. That answers you and tells you great and unsearchable things you do not know. God is not on your list. Because for you, God, hey, it's good to be a believer. But you know, if there is something that we must you see, you see, we are not to be, you know, too spiritual. What about, they said what? Put film where? Okay. Order some on Amazon. Hey, hey, mm -mm. Water in this house. That is your concern. But you have not asked God and say, Lord, I need to know what is it, the devil doing. Is this something that is going to, is, is, is any catastrophe? Is that something that is going to change dramatically? What it is that the devil is cooking? What, 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 what are his people even planning? What, what, what are they conniving? But you are not a, because there is only God that can tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Google doesn't have the some of you chat GP is your God now. You even go to instead of you going to prayer for God to 
explain to you what is in Jeremiah 33.3. You have gone to chat GP. Chat GP, what is Jeremiah 33.3? That is your life. That is how Christians are living today. I'm telling you. AI is, is the answer for everything. It's time to wake up, church. It's time for us to wake up and begin to ask God, Lord, I don't know what the devil is cooking. I don't know what these people are doing through this eclipse, but I know that when it comes to moon and stars and suns, it is connected to witches and wiz witches and wizards and warlocks like to manipulate the elements to cause certain events to change around the world. But Lord, I'm under your clock. I'm, I'm, I'm under your divine clock. I'm under you, Lord God, and, and my destiny will not be tampered with. The destinies of my children will not be tampered with. Whomsoever speaks incantations over this solar eclipse to analyze me and my children to bring about my demise and my children the moon will consume them and swallow them in jesus name no you are not there you are go going to walmart to buy six pack of packs of water and because there is a limit a cap you go to target as of us here in england we go to us that we've already there is no water there solar eclipse you are disturbing your wife oh have you got enough chicken in the freezer how many packs? That, that is how Christians are living today. Oh, since there will be no electric, perhaps we can buy a projector to entertain the kids. So that meanwhile, the kids will have something to watch. But you are not telling your children to watch in prayer. When God says watch, watch the time, watch the hour, be in prayer. Don't be manipulated. Don't be controlled by the enemy. You see, you ladies, you, are, you should be praying more than the men. Because only you have a cycle, a, a, a menstrual cycle. It means that it's a cycle that needs, that, that needs to be programmed according to the moon for 28 days. But some of you that are suffering from fibroids cannot conceive. Your repro reproductive gates are closed. You don't understand that somebody went to the moon to program your reproductive gates. Now your period that God has given you, he cycled you for five days of period, but you on 10 days, some of you 15 days, bleeding nonstop. God has programmed your cycle for 28 days, but the devil and the witches and wizards have programmed it for 15 days. And you are under that lunar calendar of the devil. You are not under the, 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 the Lord's calendar. If they succeeded before the eclipse, what will they do be doing now with the eclipse? Rituals, taking things, doing things, manipulating things. I don't know. Then you want to come and cry here. Oh, Sister Dalila, hey, respond to my message. This, 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 and that. The Bible says, Jesus Christ says, know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You don't perish because it's lack of knowledge that makes one to perish when you don't know something. Imagine a person that doesn't know that the traffic lights are there to protect them. So they don't know. They just land on, in, 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 in the Western world. For, for example, they could be coming from a big village in one remote place where there is no cars and traffic lights. They will walk through the, the, the red light and be crushed and, and be unalive. Because why? They didn't have the knowledge that these traffic lights are here to protect me. When it's red, I can't cross. I can only cross when it's green. And even if it's green, I need to look at, the, at my right and at my left and see if I can cross. Do you understand what I'm saying? But some of you, that is how are you walking in life. Russian roulette. You don't know the rules that govern the spiritual realm. You only know the rules here in the land of the living, the traffic lights and, 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 and all these different things. But other spiritual rules, you don't know. And you are, you, you are in, 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 in the great danger. But God always sends people to warn you. Be very careful the people you keep around. Jehoshaphat was a righteous man. He did the right thing. He went and consulted the prophet and said, Lord, 
I'm not going to go to any God. I'm going to go straight to my God and consult him concerning my situation, concerning us. But although he had, he had a clean heart before God, he was a diligent man and he went and consulted Elijah. Still, he lost the battle. Come on now, let's, let us reflect saints and stop hiding from the truth. Jehoshaphat was a righteous man. He did nothing wrong in the sight of the Lord. But who was he keeping company with? Who was he associating himself with? Two kings that were idolatrous enemies of God. And because of their rebellion, they were not successful because when they went to challenge Moab at the end, the Moabite king, because his two other friends were weak, the sacrifice only covered for who? For Jehoshaphat. It did not cover for, for both of those wicked ones. What happens? They had to flee, run for their lives. And I'm telling you, the only reason why God did not allow them to something bad is because of Jehoshaphat. That is why prophet Elisha said, listen, if it wasn't for you, prophet Jehoshaphat, you Jehoshaphat, I would have never left my mountain to come and meet you here. It is because of you in respect to you, because I know you are a man of God. So at this time and hour, who you keep company with, you will be detrimental for your survival, spiritually, physically, mentally, financially. It will be detrimental. Even some people that call you on the, on the phone. Do you know when you say hello? Our is an agreement. I have agreed to take your call. I have agreed to listen to you. To receive impartation from you. Some people you just block them. You already know the spirit in them is the spirit of witchcraft, is the spirit of rebellion, is the spirit of gossip, is the spirit of wickedness. So why are you answering the phone? Why are you answering the phone? Oh, but eh, eh, the sister Dalila, no man is an island. Eh, 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 I can't be isolated. Carry on. Then one hey, oh, oh, when the enemy comes like a flood, the Lord will not raise up a standard for you. You will be left there hanging. Caught, caught, <clears throat> you will be weighed in a, in a scale and found wanting. Because you are keeping them around you. It's as simple as that. Even when Jonah was on that boat running from God and the calling of God. The man, the ungodly man inside of that ship said, Hey, who here has sinned against the God? Somebody here sinned against the God. And Jonah couldn't hide it anymore. He said, it's me. I'm running away from my God. And I know it's me that is causing you all these problems and storm in this boat. So, hey, I'm going to throw myself to the sea. Isn't that what happened? Some of you, the reason why the astral projection is working, you are breaking bread with certain people that they themselves are astral projectors. You are entertaining, you are bringing people in your home. You are, you are associating yourself, calling them, talking to them, telling the business. Because it's my cousin. We, we share the same blood from my mother's side. Carry on. Isn't that what Jehoshaphat said? My war is your war and this, this and that. Let us go because some of you think I'm lying. Look, let us go to the beginning. Second Kings 3. Moab revolts. Joram, son of Ahab, became king of Israel in Samaria in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. And he reigned 12 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father and mother had done. Still, he had done this Joram that, 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 that Jehoshaphat decided to, 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 to team up with him. Did what was wicked in the sight of the Lord. The Bible does not lie. His life was not correct before God. This man, king, call whom? This man. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, Joram. Hmm? 
Nevertheless, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. He did not turn away from them. He was a man that was wicked, was an idolater, and was leading Israel into what? Adultery. Was leading Israel into what? Idolatry. Let us see, look at the second one. Now, this is talking about, okay. But after Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So at that time, King Joram set out to Samaria and mobilized all Israel. You see, this same Joram, an unfaithful man to God, an idolater, went and summoned the people of God. And sent this message to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. You see? To say, hey, let us go fight the Moabites. Watch the response of Je Jehoshaphat. I will go with you, he replied. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Covenant. Come on now. Look at that. Covenant. I will go with you. Oh, oh I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, to, to, to this mall. I'm going to just go buy something. You are joining them. Covenant. I need you to help me with this. I need you to covenant. Because look, I will go with you. The minute that he decided to say, I will go with you. Do you think if Jehoshaphat has just stayed in Judah, God would have not protected Jehoshaphat? If Jehoshaphat just called uh, prophet Elijah to inquire from the Lord concerning his kingdom, do you think Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat didn't have any need to engage in that battle and go and send his men there. He didn't have any need. But because of that sense of these are my people, these are Jewish, these are Hebrews like myself. Hmm? You, my people, as your people, my horses, as your horses, you, you, you. My cousin, my rather die. My girlfriend, but my, my, my siblings, flesh on my flesh, carry on. Some of the people you are keeping around you are the reason why you are not. Be able to be victorious over the many spiritual battles. Hmm? That is it. And let me tell you something. I'm not saying here that you shouldn't help people. You can help somebody but not be in covenant with them. If I see somebody begging food in the streets, oh, can I have a sandwich, something to eat? I'll go and buy and give them, right? But that does not mean I'm in covenant with you. I helped you because that is my duty as a Christian. By now, if I say to you, sit down with me, bake ye, break ye bread with me. That is the problem. Some of you, oh, my, my auntie, she's a very good, nice lady. She always helps the family, but she's a witch. She, she does tarot cards. But she is such a nice person. Listen, the devil doesn't call people who are not beautiful, looking nice, smelling good. Stop thinking that witches and wizards and warlocks are people who have that long pointy nose that is curvy on the end and are carrying a broomstick and smell and stink. Look at your entertainers that are saying that are practicing witchcraft and are occultic and using the, 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 the pages of the Bible as a tampon. They look good. They have nice wigs. They smell good. They have the best designer things. They have access to every beauty treatment that is on earth. Even us people will think, some of us believers, they will think it's us that is practicing and not them. If we were to just to judge by aesthetics. Women of God are very plain. Because we, we know that we, our, our flesh is not to be glorified. The flesh will one day die. We don't give too relevance to the flesh. If we can look good on some days, we will. But if we can't, guess what? We, we are not our, we are not our, our, our outward appearance does, does not, uh, um, uh, uh, does not have any, 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 any influence on our inward appearance. This is just a, a, a shell. It's a vessel. And some of us, because of some of you, woman of God, because of your prayer, your righteousness before God, your sacrifice of prayer, you are constantly in the presence of God. When you go out, children marvel at you, children smile at you, but you don't have the latest lipstick, you don't have the latest blusher, you don't have the latest wig, but because the glory of God is upon you, you are beautiful. 
people look at you as if they have seen a wonder and you thinking, but I'm not wearing any makeup. I'm not wearing anything special, but the glory of God makes you special. The time that you spend in prayer makes you attractive. The people are drawn to you. Children are drawn to you. Even a puppies want to come and lay beside you because it is the presence of God. And it's not in a way that is sensual or no. It's in a way that is the glory of God. So now that you are growing in prayer, growing in supplication to God, going in sacrifice time, leaving the world behind, you have, you have no time for foolishness. You are filled with the presence of God. The glory of God overshadows you. Is more than pearls. Is more than being adorned with the best jewelry that is out there. Because you are, you are, you are a child of God. We don't need the big 16 winch we've on. We don't need none of that. We don't need the latest car. The late, the, the, we, 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 we just need the presence of God. And that's it. Don't need anything else. See that worship song? Give me you. Everything else can wait. We just want the presence of God. We just need the presence of God. We don't need all these apparatus, extra, extra. We just need the presence of God. Give us Jesus at any time. Give us Jesus at any minute. And we are good. That is all we want. We don't need this and that to be happy, to have this and to have. We are happy because we know that Christ is our crown of glory. He is our justice. He is our everything. And we are all right with that. And that's why the devil hates the children of God. He hates the servants of God. Because when we get up in the morning, he knows that there is thunder in his kingdom. As soon as we get up at midnight, the covens of witches are catching a fire. Servants of darkness are falling from their covens and being unalive by the fire of God. So by you just getting up when the devil sees your feet touching the ground. Hey! Sister Tanya is up again. Hey, Sister Dalila is up again. Fire, fire, fire all the time. How can I just put these people on a chokehold? I hate them so much. How can I infiltrate the environment? How can I do something? And that is why he has told the, the servants, look, you are going to have to bring more than these animals that you have been bringing. I want somebody from your family. If you, Some of you, you are so powerful in the spirit that the devil has told the witch in your family that, look, unless you bring the best of your children, I'm not going to be able to do anything. And the devil is lying to them because the devil knows that he's not going to be able to do it. but because he wants flesh and, and blood he is telling them to bring and still they are not going to be successful because you are a person that you have a relationship a covenant with God you mean business when you're in the presence of God but as for you other other ones some of you half the live stream you are sleeping hey this sister talks too much how am I supposed to focus it's been 30 minutes. This woman is talking, 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 talking too much. Hey, hmm. Let me go to my bathroom. Let me go and get a cup of tea. I'll come back. I'll still find her. When she's praying, I'm going to come back. Some of you. Yet, Satan has something prepared for you. Don't worry. You that have six bonnets, seven bonnets for each day of the week. One pink, one yellow, one red, and other co colors. You are always ready, set up to go to bed to sleep. But you don't understand that the battle starts at night. The Bible says, and men slept, and the devil came and sowed tears amongst the wheat. Oh yes, some of you, you have a bonnet, uh, you have a bonnet radar. When the bonnet is just half, you know how to get up and fix it. But you don't know how to wake up midnight to pray. You are lacking. Your spiritual life is dead. You are in the spiritual world and you have no armor. You have no helmet. You have no breastplate. You are lacking in everything. I pray that you will wake up today. Oh yes. I pray that you will wake up today once for all. And understand that you need to be prepared. Oh, but sister Dalila, I've been preparing, sister. I've been praying. I'm on fasting. 
I'm praying during those, those times. I'm seeking God. I don't think I can pray anymore, Sister Dalila. Always I'm praying. No, I'm not talking to you. A person that is always in the presence of God, come or even if it is the end of the world, the army get, we are safe under the wings of God. I'm talking about you that you are not under the wings of God. You can, you, you can, you can tell me, the, 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 <laughs> you are capable of telling me the names of each one of the, 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 the people on Big Brother's house. You can tell me which one of, of, of the actresses. On, on, on a house of Atlanta, a house of all these shows. But you cannot, you cannot locate the book of Habakkuk in the Bible. You cannot locate the book of 2nd of Kings, 1st of Kings. Neither you can locate the book of Corinthians. You don't know if it's New Testament or Old Testament. You are lost in time and space. But then when you see that, hey, witches and wizards and warlocks, we begin to hear a sermon at church. I rebuke you. You are not rebuking anything. You have no power. You don't know the word. You don't pray. You don't seek God. Oh, but Sister Dalila, my mother is always praying and fasting. <laughs> Salvation is individual. Yes, your mother is praying, but what about you? Oh, but Sister Dalila, my mother goes to pray a vigil and she takes my picture so my pastor can put oil on it. Don't worry. It's you that is up for grabs. This solar eclipse. Whatever the devil has got going on for his servants. Some of you, you just want to know what is the devil going to be because it's intriguing. But you are not thinking of how can I protect myself and my home? What do I need to do? Some of you, you know everything about the occult, what they do, where they've gone. You're sending me videos. But are you ready? Are you ready in prayers? Are you ready for what is to come? Are you prepared? Because the Lord says man is to pray and not to faint. He said more. Pray without ceasing. So precious saints, we are going to pray aggressively today. It's not going to be just a short prayer, a little, little prayer. We're going to pray seriously. But let me take you to the word of God. In closing, Romans 5, verse 6 to 8. The power of sacrifice. You remember what the Moabite king did, right? He gave his first son. He didn't give his second. He didn't give to the devil what he didn't want. He gave to the devil the best. That is why the Israelites, even though they were a people, a nation chosen by God, they had to run and, 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 and escape for their lives and flee for their lives. Do you understand? That is what I wanted to keep in mind. Although the Israelites were the people of God, the chosen of the Most High God, a people that had what? A covenant with God. They had to run because the, the Moabite king had presented such a sacrifice that the ground was crying against the Israelites. The Israelites had to run. But let me tell you of a greater sacrifice that counteracts any sacrifice. And this is the scripture that you're going to have to be praying these days. This is the scripture that you're going to rely upon in case somebody's thinking of offering something to take you out, whatever it is. Romans 5 from verse 6 to 8. Romans 5 from verse 6 to 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Come on now. Very rarely would anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Come on now. It is for you. It is for me that Christ died. While we were what? Still sinners. While we were still what? Powerless and ungodly. Okay? 
He didn't, he didn't say, hey, I'm going to come for the, and die for the good people. There is no need. It is you and me that are weak and powerless, ungodly, that he died for you to be made righteous, for you to be able to stand by that blood shed on a cross of Calvary, and then that blood of Jesus will be able to speak for you. That's why we sing that the blood of Jesus has never lost his power. He still cries out from, from where he has been spilled. Here, the land of the living and the land, the, the other land. The blood of Jesus Christ about your salvation, your deliverance, your freedom, your health, your finances, your children, your job, whatever it is. There is a blood that is constantly reminding heaven and earth, hell and under earth, principalities, rulers of darkness. Fallen angels. That blood is still reminding. That hey. I'm here to justify this person. Sanctify and purify. Blot out the transgressions. Blot out the iniquities. And every day he cries. He cries. He cries. It's not like the sacrifice of the demonic people. That they need to constantly provide. Provide the blood. Provide the blood to keep speaking, speaking. No, our, ours will forever speak till eternity. I hope you understand, saints. That king of Moab understood a principle that many Christians don't understand. When you want God to move God and you want to affect the supernatural, you have to give a sacrifice. And what sacrifice do we remind the spiritual about? This one, Romans 5 from verse 6 to 8. The blood of Jesus. His, die, his death on the cross. That is the greatest sacrifice. That counteracts any other sacrifice of animals, people. And we have to invoke this sacrifice every day. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can protect you, can keep you and your family safe. It's by the blood, through the blood, and nothing apart from the blood. It is just the blood or nothing. The spirit does only respect one rule and his blood. That is why God, why do you think Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary? Because that is the spiritual and physical rule that governs spiritual laws and physical laws is what you have what blood is he speaking for you sit down with yourself is it the blood of jesus that is speaking for you or he, 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 what, what is it that is speaking for you in the spiritual and in the physical if you are not under the blood place yourself under the blood of jesus by confessing him as your Lord, as your Savior, as your God, as your King. Anything that you have that is an idol, abandon it. Leave it behind. Place yourself in the arms of Jesus. In his presence, in his power, and in his authority. All right? There is always a way out. There is always a way out. And the way out is the Lord. The way out is the Lord Jesus. Let us make a confession. Obadiah 1 verse 3 to 4. And it reads... The pride of thine heart had deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Thou thou exalt itself as the eagle, and thou that set thy nest among the stars. Thence will I bring thee down, said the Lord. I don't care where power is in some sort of cleft speaking against you and against your children. 
speaking against your rising, your destiny, speaking against your own life, that you will not be alive to see another month. I don't get where power is keeping you bound and oppressed and in unemployment, in debt, in great desperation. I don't know what power of witchcraft is keeping you as a slave. You can't get a job. You can't move forward. You can't get married. You can't, you can't, you're married, but you can't conceive a child. You are unable to pay your rent. You are in great distress all the time. You are crying all the time. And you know that, Sister Dalila, I know that this is something spiritual. I know somebody is doing this against me. I know that there is a power. I feel, I see shadows in my house at night. When I go to my bed, I feel an evil presence in my room. And sometimes I open my eyes as if a man or a woman is standing in front of me. And I get shivers down my spine. I have great nightmares. I can't sleep, Sister Dalila, sometimes. The nightmares are so demonic. I, f I am afraid of even getting up in the morning and go out because of the level of fear in my heart. F F Sister Dalila, God has even revealed who is doing it. I keep seeing the person in the spirit oppressing me, doing things, feeding me, doing the most. I am fed in my dreams. I, I get up in the morning. I have fluids in my bed. I feel defeated and I'm tired of fighting, Sister Dalila. I don't know what to do anymore. Invite Jesus in your heart. Invite him into your soul. Leave the world behind. You cannot have power to defeat these evil, demonic, and satanic entities. And witches and wizards and warlocks. Unless you are plugged to the socket of victory, which is Jesus. Unless you are drenched in the blood of Jesus. Unless you have his authority. And you can only have his authority if you are fully committed to him. If you don't have any other gods. And I'm here to decree as a servant of the Most High God. As a servant of the Most High God, I'm here to decree. I don't care what sacrifice they done on the crossroads. I don't care what it is that they offered to the devil to do things to you today. It comes to an end. You will testify of your victory. You will be, your dreams will begin to change. You will have dreams where you are no longer the oppressed. You are conqueror in the dream you will be able to overthrow your enemies you will be able to have the victory in the dream and you that will reflect in the spiritual by doors opening by problems receiving solution from the heavens because you are now plugged to the socket of life which is jesus the blood of jesus is speaking for you atoning for you Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we approach you today and we worship you, Lord God, and we give you honor, we give you glory and adoration. Father Lord, some of us here, we have come to the realization that we cannot continue to have other gods or be associated with people that are idolaters and, th and still think that we can win our spiritual battles. Father Lord, we come before you humbly to ask you for forgiveness of our sins and transgressions and iniquities. Forgive some of us, Father Lord, that were, were involved at some point or are still involved in the occult, owning voodoo dolls, owning potions, herbs. Father Lord, all these things will not allow anyone to win the battle. We can only win the battle in the spirit. When we are under the blood of Jesus and the power that is in the name of Jesus. And to be able to exercise dominion in the spirit and power in the spirit. We need to be covenant to your son. We need to have a covenant with you to have authority. Because the name of Jesus can only have its effect in the mouth of those who are righteous and covenanted to you, Lord God. So therefore, Father Lord, we repent from our iniquities, our sins, our transgressions, Lord God. Father Lord, we are leaving the world behind, Lord God, to establish a covenant with you. And we know that we are more than conquerors with you, Lord God. We are invisible in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we repent, Almighty God, we soak ourselves, our family members. We drench, we saturate our environment, our property with the precious blood of Jesus. 
We take authority over this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree that all the elements of this year will cooperate with us in the mighty name of Jesus. This, this moon that is about to go red, this eclipse, the sun, the moon, the stars, the wind, the earth, the, the, the sea, the waters, the mountains, whatever it is. Father Lord, we decree that all these elements, oh Father Lord of this year, will cooperate with us in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree that the, the elemental forces will refuse to cooperate with our enemies this year in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree that this moon that is about to go into an eclipse will refuse to cooperate with our enemies, Lord God, already ready to go there and commit certain atrocities to bring us down in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak unto the sun, the moon, and the stars. They will not smite us and our families this year in the mighty name of Jesus. We pull down every negative energy planning to operate against our lives this year in the mighty name of Jesus. We confess that this year, this is the year the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it in the mighty name of Jesus. We dismantle any power that is uttering incantations to capture this year in the mighty name of Jesus. We render such incantations and satanic prayers null and void over us and our families in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirits of favor, counsel, might, and power. Come upon us afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall excel this year. And us, nothing shall defile us and all our children in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall possess the gates of our enemies this year in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord shall anoint us with the oil of gladness above our fellows this year in the mighty name of Jesus. The fire of the enemy will not burn us and our families this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Our ears shall hear good news and we shall not hear the voice of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, our lives and the lives of the members of our families are secured in Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, let every satanic checkpoint mounted against us in the heavenlies be dismantled in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil altar prepared against our breakthroughs in the heavenlies and in the sea be dismantled by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every arrangement that sorcerers and witches have prepared against us be overthrown in the mighty name of Jesus. Any evil thing programmed into the sun, the moon against our lives, be dismantled in the mighty name of Jesus. You spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies, militating against our stars, we bring the hook of the Lord against you and frustrate all your activities. In the mighty name of Jesus, we receive open heavens for our lives this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, we take divine insurance against all forms of accident and tragedy. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. We send lightning, thunder, and the hook of the Lord against the evil queen in the heavenlies, militating against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil spiritual equation programmed against our lives, we command you to change in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Every evil spiritual equation programmed against our lives, we command you to change in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak unto our umbilical gates to overthrow every negative parental spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We break the yoke of any evil spirit having access to any organ in our bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak unto the headquarters of evil programmers and blow up their altars in the mighty name of Jesus. Any evil thing written in the cycle of the moon against us be blotted out in the mighty name of Jesus. We command the careful siege of the enemy against our lives to be dismantled in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we come by faith to Mount Zion and we command deliverings upon, upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We file a counter report. Hallelujah. In heaven against any dark spirit militating against us and our children. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bring the blood of Jesus over the stubborn pursuer that does not want us to go. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bring the blood of Jesus over every evidence that can be tendered by wicked spirits against us. In the mighty name of Jesus, every evil handwriting engraved by demonic iron pen against us be wiped off by the blood of Jesus. Be wiped off by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every wicked part 
cooking our affairs be roasted in the mighty name of Jesus. Every witchcraft pot working against us, we bring the judgment of God against you in the mighty name of Jesus. Our place of birth will not be our cauldron in the mighty name of Jesus. This city where we live will not be cauldron in the mighty name of Jesus. Every pot of darkness seated against our lives be destroyed by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command every witchcraft pot using a remote control against our health to be broken to pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power calling our names into any cauldrons fall down and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every cauldron making noise against us to monitor our lives. What are you waiting for? Die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Envious witchcraft, destiny killers, health destroyers, destroyers, priests operating on even altars, fall down and die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. Every evil cardinal pot be judged from heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil cardinal will cook up our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Every counsel of witchcraft working against us will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Every agreement with Satan and over our lives, the lives of our children, the lives of our husbands and wives, and all our families. Oh, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we counsel you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we counsel you now. Every astral projection against us and our homes and our children and our family members, we frustrate you in the name of Jesus. We frustrate you in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire pursue them. 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 Holy, Holy Ghost fire overtake. We disentangle ourselves and our families from every witchcraft cage and pot in the mighty name of Jesus. Every enemy that will not let us go easily, we bring the judgment of death against you in the mighty name of Jesus. This year our blessings will not sink in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of salvation fall upon our families in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the spirit of salvation fall upon our families in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, be vengeance. Oh, Father Lord, bring vengeance. Bring your sword, Lord God, of revenge. Oh, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And let every power cooking our progress in an evil pot receive fire of judgment. In the mighty name of Jesus, every satanic program emanating from the cauldron of darkness be reversed in the mighty name of Jesus. Any evil fire boiling any satanic program in our lives be quenched in the mighty name of Jesus. The counsel of the wicked against our lives in this city shall not stand. We command them to perish in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, let the counsel of God for our lives prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power cooking our flesh and our health in any evil cauldron receive the fire of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil bird of satanic program emanating from any cauldron of darkness fall down and die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every pot cooking our affairs, the Lord rebukes you, the Lord rebukes you, the Lord rebukes you in the mighty name of Jesus. Rebuke the spell of any witchcraft pot from our necks in the mighty name of Jesus. We break every witchcraft pot of our lives and children in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every evil pot have their honors in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father Lord, we release our lives from the cauldron of blood hunters, household witchcraft, mischief planners, eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood, star hunters and blood polluters in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, let that same fire that Elijah called from heaven fall upon all our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God of Elijah, send down fire from heaven and consume all our enemies just like you did in the days of Elijah. Oh God of Elijah, send fire from heaven and consume all our enemies. Oh, send fire from heaven, Lord God. Consume our enemies. Send fire from heaven, Jehovah, and consume all our problems and witches and wizards and warlocks cooperating for sickness. Oh, unemployment, poverty, defeat, delay, stagnation. Oh, send fire from heaven, oh God of Elijah. Oh God of Elijah, send down fire. Oh God of Elijah, send down fire in our environment send down fire in our job send down fire in our environment send down fire send down fire oh god of elijah that says the lord no weapon shall prosper against my servants that says the lord as this lunar eclipse is about to take place my children are hidden under my shadow 
my children shall not be moved Israel will not be moved oh like Mount Zion the children of Israel will not be moved oh those who wrestle day and night against Israel will perish against the servants of the most high God they will perish with their sacrifice they will perish in their wickedness oh and everything that has been taken from my servants everything that has been taken from my children whether financial blessing whether health whether their marriages whatever they have have lost to the enemy because of ignorance because of carelessness it's been restored as now deliverance is taking place as repentance is taking place I behold I'm restoring all to my servants to the ones who've been diligent in they serving me to the ones that have been diligent in serving me in observing the hours of the night in anointing their homes in seeking my face in humbling themselves before me and denying their flesh and crucifying their flesh and chastising their appetite behold I am coming like a fiery man I am coming like a fiery man from the skies with my swords and my army to execute judgment on the wicked to execute judgment on the rebellious oh hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Abba Father thank you King of Glory hallelujah God we receive your word Lord God and we are ready because vengeance is yours Lord God vengeance is yours Lord God hallelujah king of glory hallelujah Abba Father oh kere baba 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 hallelujah Jesus hallelujah God oh glory be your, your name hallelujah king Jesus hallelujah king of glory thank you Jesus thank you Abba Father thank you king of glory Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. We honor you, Jehovah. We honor you, God. We honor you, King of Heaven. We honor you, Lord God, as the saints of the Lord, as the redeemed of the Lord. We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Jesus. There is a lady here. You had a baby, but you lost the baby. There is a lady here in heavy depression because you had a baby, but you lost the baby. There was a health problem with that baby and you lost that baby. Right, capital me. For the Lord is speaking. Come on now, identify yourself, young lady. You lost a child. You had a child, but you lost that child. Come on now. Identify yourself. Identify yourself very quickly. Identify yourself very quickly, lady. The Lord is here and he's speaking. You that you had a child and you lost that is a baby. I can see it was a baby. It was not even a toddler, but you lost that baby with a strange infirmity. It is you. The Lord is saying that that child, it was not the desire of God that that child perish. But because of your carelessness in prayer, because you did not watch at night, that God collected the child but the lord is saying he's gonna restore and he's gonna expose everybody in your family everybody that is working extra time to make sure that you lose your babies that you show that you, you you don't have a family there is a person in your family that is doing this but today not only god is exposing them but god is bringing an end to the demonic and satanic affliction against your life god is going to restore you you are going to have more children and god is going to bring you comfort god is going to bring you comfort to your heart you are not going to cry anymore you are not going to cry anymore god will comfort you and god will allow you to have more children in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus begin to glorify the name of the Lord saints begin to glorify the name of the Lord saints begin to glorify God begin to go glorify the Lord begin to glorify the Lord begin to give God praise say Lord open my case Lord God open my file speak to me O Lord let use this lady as a vessel Lord God Use this lady to speak to me, O oh Lord. I need a word today, Lord. I know that you still speak. I'm like Jehoshaphat. And I need a word, Lord God. And I'm tired of suffering and I need to speak to my situation, Lord. Speak to me, Jehovah. Speak to me, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Hallelujah, Lord God. There is a person here. You are going through bullying at work. Oh, yes. Not only your supervisor is bullying you, but your co-workers are also bullying you. And you said to God, Lord, although this job is helping me to pay my bills, I can't take it anymore, sister. God is going to remove each one of them from your path. 
God is arising to fight your case today. And those who oppress you, behold, you will look at and try to see where are the Egyptians that used to persecute you. And they will be gone. And they will be gone. You will not see them anymore. You will not see them anymore. Because God is the God of vengeance. The God that we worship, he avenged his servants. Possess your possession. Possess your possession. Say, Lord, I possess this, this word. I take possession. I receive it from my mother. I receive it for myself. I receive it for my children. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a person here that you have been offered um, an opportunity of a job, but it's a far location. You've been offered a job, but it's in a different state. You've been offered a job, but that job is far away from you. And you ask, Lord, Lord, it is, is, it my, is it your will that I go? Should I relocate? Should I take this job opportunity and relocate? The Lord said, go, take the job opportunity and relocate. This opportunity has been granted by God. Don't be afraid. You can go. Go in peace. For the Lord thy God is with you. Come on now, somebody. Life is about risks. And if God is in your boat, you don't have to be afraid of the storm. If God is in that ship, you don't need to fear the storm. Hallelujah. For the Lord will calm the storm. The Lord will say, peace be still to that storm. All you need to do is to trust God. To be a believer is to be in, it's like one, the, the disciples that were in that ship and the storm came. But because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. You will say, peace be still to every storm in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I receive it. And I'm bless me, Lord. If you die, if you will be with me, Lord God, then I will prosper. Then I will advance. Then I will have the victory. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, I am that I am. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, I am that I am. There is a person here. You are an accountant. And as you are doing the books for one of the many companies that you do the books you notice that is there are some incongruencies there is some money missing and you are afraid to tell the ceo of that company that you found some incongruencies with the balance there is some money missing there are things that look like they have been forged right capital me god wants to give you divine instructions of what you need to do come on now you need to write capital me you are an accountant and you deal with different companies you do the books for different companies and one of the companies listen sister daily the lord is saying that produce that report to the ceo and not is it you or not please don't identify if it's not you the accountant here there is an accountant here and you do the books you do the, 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 the books for a lot of people, a lot of companies. And one of the companies that you, you do the books for, you notice that there, is, there are some inconsistencies. There is some money missing and it looks like it's been forged to cover up. And the Lord wants to speak to you because you need to, to produce a report to that CEO and say to that CEO, look, this is beyond my capacity. You are going to have to you're going to have to get some auditors involved. But I can see some inconsistencies here. You're going to raise the, re the, the the red flag. That is all you need to do, but you can't remain silent. Write capital me very quickly, please. And if it's not you, stop identifying. All right? Only write me if it's you that God is speaking to. God does not like this order. We must do things orderly. Okay? Write capital me. You that do the accounting. You do the, the books for many companies. You are uh, an accountant. What we call a chartered accountant. And you do the books for many companies. But to one of the companies that you work. You notice some inconsistencies. There is some money missing. That there is no explanation to where that money is gone to. Right, capital me. 
You're going to have to raise the red flag into that company, to the CEO. You cannot continue to be silent. You cannot continue to be silent. You have to tell the truth. Be transparent. Write capital me. You that are the accountant and you work for different companies. And one of the companies that you work for, that you provide accounting services to, the money is not... Um, 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 the money, the maths, something is wrong. There is some money there missing. You can see as an accountant, there is some, some, some sort of fraudulent activity going on. Write capital me. I'm not going to call you again. Write capital me very quickly. And you're going to have to do the right thing and contact the, 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 the CEO and let him know. Confide in, their, in, in them that, look, the money is not adding up. Identify by writing capital me very quickly. Because if you don't identify, you are going to be guilty as the ones that took the money. Because you don't, you are not, that is why they hired you. For you to do the books. To see if everything is in place. And in case it's not in place, you are to raise the red flag to the owner of the company to call auditors. Those that are more equipped to investigate further write capital me very quickly because i can see that if you don't do this they are gonna charge you as guilty because you are thinking oh it's not my business i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get involved oh no you need to be involved you're gonna have to blow the whistle and tell the truth okay because we you are a believer you can't just look at a situation like that and go about your business. That means you have been paid, but you didn't do your job. Identify yourself, cap, write capital me. You the accountant. You did some uh, uh, work for a company and the, the, the numbers are not adding up. Write capital me very quickly. Come on now, or else you will be covering up. You will be as guilty as the people who swindled the man. Identify yourself. Very quickly. Don't leave this live stream without identifying yourself. Okay? Don't remain silent. If you remain silent, it means you are just as guilty as the people who took this man. If I were you, I would identify. If something goes wrong, you cannot say that God did not warn you. You cannot say that God did not help you. It's, your blood will be upon your own head. You can't blame God and you can't say that God doesn't love you and he did not warn you. This is a warning from the Lord. You are an accountant. Tell the truth. Be honest. Don't lie. You are hired to provide a service and you need to be transparent. You need to be honest. It's up to you. I'm not calling you anymore. If you want to identify, you identify. If you don't want to identify because you are afraid, that is your choice. Beloved saints, before I go any further, I want to read some testimonies I received that I know they will help you greatly to grow in Christ and they will strengthen your faith. The sister says, hi, sister Dalila. Few weeks ago, you gave a prophecy that someone is trying to buy a house. Instead of being approved, you always get disappointed, disappointing feedback. It's either the house is sold or no longer for sale. I identified. And three weeks ago, we were approved. To God be the glory. May you be blessed beyond your imagination. Amen. So saints, another prophecy has been fulfilled. God has done it for this sister. And we glorify the name of the Lord. We glorify the name of the Lord. If he's done it for this sister, he will do it for you. He will do it for me. He will do it for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Another testimony, saints. Good day, sister Dalila. I hope you are well. I have a testimony. On the 5th of March, you said that there is someone who went to an interview and is waiting for a response. I identify by writing me. Then you said I must receive the job. Two days later, 7 March, I was told that I had passed the interview and I am in the final stages of selection. I am happy to announce that I started my internship yesterday in a prestigious company 
good. God is amazing. I am truly grateful for this blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Let us all glorify the name of the Lord and be glad in him. He is our rock. He is our foundation. He is our everything. If he did it for these sisters, he will do it for us. I encourage you to keep praying. Keep, keep seeking God. Don't run away from God. Continue to confess your sins. Continue to ask him for his help. Continue to ask him for his Holy Spirit. Continue to ask him for guidance. Come on. Hallelujah. We glorify the name of the Lord. Look how wonderful God is. Hallelujah. You, the accountant, here I'm going to call your name once again. You are an accountant and you did some work for a company and you noticed that there is some money missing in that company, but you have not reported this issue to the management of that company. You have to report it. Write capital me and report it to the company. You were hired to do the books. The money is not adding up and it is your responsibility to honor your contract with the company and to tell the truth of what is going on. All right. Or else you are going to stand as guilty as the people who withdrew the money from the company It's as simple as that. All right. Identify yourself. Right. Capital me. Don't leave this live stream in sin because if you are not doing the right thing, you are in sin. And your sin will catch up with you. Okay? Because if you see evil and you don't denounce it, you don't expose it, you are as guilty as the person who committed the sin. Okay? In the mighty name of Jesus. All right? In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You are in this situation. You need to confess your sin to God. You are in this situation. You need to do what is right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Hallelujah. Is there anyone here you would like today to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Anyone here that would like to accept the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior? Sister Dalila, I want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Write capital me in the chat. Right, capital me to establish today a covenant with God. Come on now. Right, capital me. Brother Lion, you are welcome. Omega, you are welcome. Maz, you are welcome. Three souls for the kingdom of God. Heaven rejoices. And Hege, um, Hegendino, Kangomo, Yusa something, something. John Henry, five souls for the kingdom of God. Heaven rejoices and celebrates. As Sister Cheyenne Lizette is saying, and Adri, six souls for the kingdom of God. Welcome into the kingdom of Christ Jesus. The angels in heaven are shouting your name, jubilating, including you official nuns. The angels in heaven are jubilating. They are dancing. They are celebrating because you, a prodigal son and a prodigal daughter, you have returned to Christ Jesus, your God, your King, your soon coming King as well. The king of glory. Hallelujah. I am going to tell you what has taken place. The Lord Jesus has completely erased your name from the book of hell and eternal damnation and has written your name in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, everlasting God. Thank you for these precious souls. Now that you have accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you cannot go back to your vomit. You cannot return to your wickedness. You're going to have to stay in the way of the Lord in being faithful to God. You cannot go back to your lying, your cheating, your anti-clockwise lifestyle. You cannot go back to your fornication, to your corn, to your orgies. You cannot go back to stealing, deceiving. You cannot go back to your addictions. You have to be pure for Christ. Oh, but Sister Dalila, how do I do that? How do I go about it? Very easy. Become a student of the Word of God. There are scientific studies that prove that people who are constantly reading the Word of God 
are less likely to commit crimes, to steal, to do evil things, are less likely to be aggressive. There is such a power in the word of God that even scientists notice that those who read the word of God are less likely to commit crimes, less likely to be violent, less likely to be depressed. So the best antidote for the cares for you not to go back to your vomit, for you to remain in Christ and remain victorious is that you become a student of the word of God. Okay. And develop a lifestyle of prayer. You see how we communicate through ver verbally. We communicate through the power of the word with one another. You communicate with your God through prayer. Be a woman and a man of God of prayer that you are constantly in supplication unto the Lord. You are constantly worshiping him. You are constantly in your presence. All right. And that is paramount. Begin to pray as well. Asking the Lord to order your steps and to show you where he wants you to be baptized in the water and who he wants to baptize you as well. Okay. And as you commit your life to Christ, as you surrender your all to him, um, God does not promise us a life of easy, that is easy and void of tribulation. What he promises us is that he will always be with us. And as he overcame the world, we will overcome too. All right. Trials and tribulations will come. But only those who are in a certain level spiritually. Because they have, you know, you can rise above your problems through prayer, you know. You can create a shield against depression, against um, 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 a defeat, poverty, by shielding yourself with the blood of Jesus, by being in constant spirit of prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I would like to, to invite you to become a partner to this ministry. All right. Join this big family. If you want to join us, you can go to my bio, follow this page, follow us. If you want to come to fellowship from Mondays to Saturdays, you are more than welcome. Sister Cheyenne has pinned the hour from 1 to 2.30 p.m. United Kingdom, to be more precise, London. Go to Google and check your time zone and you won't miss a ministration. I would like to also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube page. If you would like to see previous ministrations and you think that, wow, perhaps I could benefit from a little bit more teachings of the word of God, I would like to... See what has been done before. You can go to my bio and there you will find our YouTube icon on top. Um, subscribe. Become a partner. Help to spread the gospel. Share videos. Share everything. You invite people to come and join this big family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And those of you that are here for the first time, we welcome you all. Welcome, my brother. Welcome, my sister, in the mighty name of Jesus. I hope to see you once again tomorrow, God willing. I want to also remind you, saints, especially you that are here for the first time. Be very mindful of fake alternative accounts being created using my name, image and our content here to exchange money for prayers and blessings and prophetic utterances. Such pages are to be immediately reported and blocked. All right. Everything that happens on this channel is free of charge. Freely we've received and freely we give. All right. What these scammers do once they have cloned my page and create an alternative account, they block me from accessing them. That way I can't go and report them. So I rely on your on your on your due diligence and your kindness to do the reporting for me so that no one will become a victim of these scammers. All right, saints. Um, I want to also say if you would like to bless this ministry and contribute for the furtherance of the gospel here, you can do so accessing our uh, bio here. You will see the YouTube icon. All donations are appreciate, appreciated. Nothing is too small. Everything contributes for me to keep myself in ministry in great dignity. And the Lord thy God will arise from his heavenlies to grant you the victory, to give you back good measure, press it together, running over, overflowing back into your bosom, back into your lap in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
And before you leave, let me pray for you one more time. Father Lord, thank you for thy servants that came to this ministration today. We bless your name and we thank you because it was a successful ministration without destructions, without any evil, Lord God. You were here with us and you spoke and you manifested. So Lord, we thank you because we know that we are not worthy of your presence. We are not worthy, worthy of your blessings. And now that your children are about to leave, arise, O oh God, from your throne, from your, in your power. Arise, Lord God. In your anointing, Lord God, that breaks yoke and bestow such a blessing upon your servants, Father Lord, that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it as it is written, Father Lord, in Malachi 3.10. Open doors of employment for your children. Open doors that no man can shut. Father Lord, bless your servants. Father Lord, if there is any sickness, any disease, Father Lord, you that are the balm of Gilead, heal them once for all, Lord God. Father Lord, I pray, those who are in need of a house, those who are in need of provision, provision lord god be they provision father lord open doors that no man can shut father lord bring their destiny help us to them lord god to help them protect them father lord as they live be a wall of fire and of protection around them i cover them i soak them in your precious blood lord jesus and i pray that you will keep them protected that you will keep us all protecting during this solar the this lunar eclipse Whatever it is that is about to go down is not come going to come near our tent. It's not going to come near our house. Father Lord, I pray. Your children that are in need of a financial breakthrough, Father Lord, provide it for them. Cancel all debts, Lord God. Open doors, Father Lord. Father Lord, I pray for signs and miracles and wonders to manifest in your children's lives. I pray for your children's destinies to manifest once and for all in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, you are their shepherd and I speak over their lives that they shall not want. Father Lord, the cup will always run over, overflow, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Is there anyone here? Oh, sorry. There is a person here. You are still here. Identify yourself. You that you are an accountant and you did some um, um, work for a company and you have noticed that there is there are some money missing from that company. You have to report it. Don't live here without doing the right thing. Identify by writing capital me. Don't wait until I've gone to contact me on my message. I could, I, I could, in, when you inbox me, sometimes I'll be able to open and sometimes I won't be able to open because of the volume of messages I receive daily. So don't leave this live stream in sin. Confess it to God. If you are, you are here and you have noticed that you did some work for that company and the numbers are not adding up, write capital me, write capital me and do what is right. Okay. Don't collaborate with evil. Okay, don't be a part of you, Joshua. May the good Lord bless you and report it. Okay, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray for Kelly in the peak. She's at work. Concerning what? What do you want me to pray for Kelly about? Prayer has to have, you see, we don't just pray. We have to know what it is that we are praying about. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Father Lord, few houses have promotion. Father Lord, we pray for promotion. We pray for elevation, Father Lord, for everyone that is here, Father Lord. We pray for those who are in need of promotion. Father Lord, you are the one that promotes, not man. Father Lord, promotion only comes from you, Lord God. So promote, elevate. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I pray for marriages to be healed. I pray for marriages to come alive. I pray for people to be delivered from the spirit of unemployment and procrastination in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Open the reproductive gates and the wombs that are closed, Lord God. And let the barons become mothers of children, Lord God. Just like your daughter uh, Sarah in the Bible, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Behold, almighty God, the faithful tithers and givers of this ministry. And Father Lord, do it to them according to your promises in Malachi 3.10. And visit beloved sister Lori Noble's grave. Family members Anthony, Kate and Jason, Nick, Daddy Leo, Laterica, Geraldine Collins. 
Hasman Alfonso, Roberta Davis, Joanna Victorino, Foley Budricks, Marta Sam, Brenda Pizarro and her son Kevin, Selena Bradley, Teresa Sullivan, Janet Thompson, Antoinette Fleming, Jay Twekun, Tawana Watson, Jasmine Mitchell, Tyron Harris, Veronica Quayle, Terry White, Anissa Gale, Michelle Johnson, Karen Lewis, Natalie Rahel, Magdalene Kowalska, Byron Dumas, Myrna Bonilla, Carolyn Chambers, Kitamila Cole, Jewel Sample, Rikita Walla, Raymond and Renova, her parents, Kainley, Keisha, Kelvin, Cameron, Leighton Preet, Lorian Baker, Andrew Apostolo, Dolores Edwards Hardin, Elaine Todd, Julian Yoba, Janelle Grant, Mama Hurley and James, Rose Beba, Ravina Collins, Jacqueline Bogle, Denise Marshall, Sheila Ray, Carolyn Wasteland, Titi Toure, daughter Abiba Tu and her parents, Latosha Quentabam, Justin J, Junior Marshall, Leila Ibrahim, Chantel Small, chosen for such a time as this, Simone Morgan, Michelle Wallace and husband Wade, Antoinette Lewis, Natasha Fogel, children Jordan and Junior, Mother Minnie Benjamin, Asila Preston, children Tristan and Ryan, our products, China Greenlee, Mama Hurley, and brother Craig, De Craig White. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Father Lord, arise from your heavenly throne today, Lord God, and continuously rebuke the devourer, the canker worm, the grasshopper of your children's source of income in their pockets, in their finances, bank accounts, credit cards, saving accounts, in their jobs, businesses, in their cars, in their homes, Lord God, in their ministries, in their schools, Lord God. And Father Lord, open, render the heavens completely open unto thy servants. And bestow upon them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it, Lord God. Father Lord, I speak over their lives from the corridors of power in the mighty name of Jesus. By the integrity of your word. In Deuteronomy 28. And according to all the, the promises of Abraham. Father Lord, they are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations but borrow from none. Father Lord, they are like the house on the hill. They cannot be hidden. Oh, Father Lord, their gifts shall continue, continuously make room for them and bring them before great men. Whatever it is that they touch with their hands shall always be fruitful and multiply. They are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They will never wither. They will never try. They shall yield its good fruit in season and out of season. And when the enemies come against them one way, so shall they flee seven ways from the face of thy servants, because that is their inheritance. Father Lord, I speak again over their lives. Father Lord, they can never be put to shame. Oh, Father Lord, they will never be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. They are like the cedar in Lebanon. They shall grow, Father Lord, without any hindrance. Oh, Father Lord, I speak over their lives. Enlarge their coast. Enlarge their territory as you did with Father Abraham. Bless those whom bless them, but curse those whom curse them, Lord God. Father, Lord, allow them to possess their possession as you did with Father Abraham, Lord God. Father, Lord, I pray that today, Lord God, you will clothe them with a mantle of and garment of praise. Oh, Father, Lord, let your anointing for excellence fall afresh on them. Father, Lord, grant them divine connections, unmerited favor, elevation, uh, promotion. Open doors, Father Lord, this uh, uh, release from the four corners of the world. Their destiny help us today, Lord God, to locate them and to bless them according to your will and purpose for them. Father Lord, I speak over their lives. They shall never want because you are their shepherd. They shall never beg bread because King David said, Behold, I'm old and full of days. Yet I have never seen the righteous beg bread. Father Lord, show them the hidden treasures of this world and give them the anointing the power to possess it, Father Lord, and transfer the wealth of the wicked back to thy servants, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak over their lives. They will possess homes that they, they did not buy. They will enter into positions of leadership that they didn't qualify for. Father Lord, they shall escape. Father Lord, the pestilence. They shall live in abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. And as far as the sun is from the earth, so shall poverty, limitations, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach. Shame, disgrace, delay, stagnation, and the plague be far away from thy servants in Jesus' mighty name. 
Father Lord, visit as well today in your power, in your righteousness and mercy. Brother Craig White, Lashonda Brown, Tarmisha, Tarmisha Brown, Tarmisha Hayes, Shimori Chanel, the Christian Women Fellowship, which is Sister Sherelle, Denise Henry, Erin Jones, Brenda and Elijah, Elizabeth Tadis, Sarah Oguto, Stacy Cunningham, Karen Lewis, Janelle Grant, Teresa Azinj, Denise Henry, aka D Triple Seven, Natalie Nyundu, husband Musa Toure, children Hussein and Hussein Toure. Brother Kelvin Calix, Angela Maria Stolda, Brenda Togo and her family, Mrs. Erin and her household, Mercy, Percy Marshall, Jalisha Simmons, Patrice Baptiste, Nisi B, Alice Jones, children Aaron and Malachi, Sister Doris and Chloe Lynch, Kasai Films, Shine Furtado, Kasai Nelani, Daniel Elang, Candice Mack, Le Singer Hulk, Rom Toya Thorpe, Salmon Luris, Nyembezi Gululu, Tanya Barush, Christopher Birch, Giovanni Holland, Keshni Kirsty, Roshan Stanley, Ketchi Kamara, Kim Lehman, C. Michelle Johnson, Joyce and Faras Bacchus. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I rise again for these saints, Father Lord, from your heavenly throne, your throne of justice and mercy and blessings, Father Lord. And Father Lord, fulfill your promises to them in Malachi 3, 10, and, and rebuke the devourer, the canker worm, the grasshopper, right into the sources of income, Lord God, in their pockets, O oh, Almighty God. Oh, Father Lord, at their jobs, businesses, ministries, in the schools, Lord God, and render the heavenlies completely open unto thy servants and shower upon them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. Father Lord, I speak from, by the integrity of your word, uh, the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28. Each one of thy servants is the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations, but borrow from none. When the enemies come against them one way, they shall flee seven ways because that is their inheritance in you. O oh Lord. Father Lord, they are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They will never wither. They will never dry. They shall yield its good fruit in season and out of season. And everything that they touch with their hands, Lord God, shall always be fruitful and multiply. Father Lord, enlarge their coast, enlarge their territory as you did with Father Abraham. Father Lord, resurrect their purpose, resurrect their destinies, resurrect their prayer altars, Lord God. Oh, Father Lord, I speak over their lives, Lord God. There will be no barren in Israel. There will be no barren in Israel, Lord God. Every barrenness, it's over in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I speak over their lives. Oh, a, mantle, a garment of excellence, a mantle of praise, Lord God. Release, Father Lord, upon thy servants on merited favor, open doors, divine connections, elevation, promotion. Oh, Father Lord, I pray that today, Lord God, you will release from the four corners of the world their destiny. Help us to locate them and to bless them according to your will, according to your purpose to thy servants, almighty God. And as far as the sun is from the earth, so shall poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach, and, and delay and shame and disgrace be far away from thy servants the plague shall be far away from thy servants oh father lord i pray arise in your power and do your children justice and avenge them father lord with your power with your might grant them success transfer the wealth of the wicked unto thy servants lord god let them come back with testimonies signs and wonders i speak over their lives that money will touch money in their bank accounts Father Lord, money shall be the obedient servant. Testimonies, faithful companions. Father Lord, money will never embarrass them again. They shall live in the overflow as it is written in Psalm 23. They will the, the, the fountain of wealth shall never run dry, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, there shall always be an overflow. They shall rise upon the ex above and beyond all limitations of life. They shall rise above the expenses, Lord God. And as this eclipse is coming, they are under your wings, Lord God. They are under your shadow, under the power of the blood of Jesus. They are protected. They are covered in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Precious saints, you shall forever be well with you both in the land of the living and in the afterlife. Always remember, you, are the, you, you, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? You are protected. 
You are under God's powerful hand of authority. So as you go, send shalom and God willing, I shall see you all tomorrow in Jesus' name.